film don't lie from ugasports.com looking back at georgia's defensive effort against georgia tech we're sponsored by breda pest management and asw distillery we'll tell you more about them at the end of the show brent overall we're going to dive into this we have 14 plays here a lot of rushing attack the the yellow jackets ran on georgia really well we're going to talk about how that relates to alabama we're going to go second live uh, today if you're watching us live right now and look at Alabama in a second video with that scouting report. But overall, as we get into this, what did Georgia Tech do that Georgia struggled to defend in the run game? Well, it's a lot like what we saw with Auburn. And it's one of those things where when your quarterback is a true running threat and you bring the read element to it where you can consistently try to make the defense wrong, no matter what they choose, that adds a whole other element of defense that's just tough to defend. Georgia's defense is sort of built to be the ultimate defense and stop the RPO game as much as anything uh, that exists. The quarterback run element is always something that gives it a little trouble. And there's sort of three main things, outside zone stretch type plays like we saw with Missouri, some split zone stuff that will show and, and true read elements. And then the quarterback reading things, those things give Georgia's defense trouble. And guess what? Tech does all three of them. And their offense coordinator happens to have been in the building the past two years and kind of, you know, almost knows their defense maybe just as well as as they do. I'll start with this run to the right here, first and 10, first play of the game. And, and we're going to show some good, the sort of a good with a little bit of things here. And this is where, you know, edge setting sort of talks about, gets discussed as well. But you've got jet motion that Georgia Tech uses a lot. It's eye candy. They use it to give, they use it to fake, but they also use eye candy. And they, you don't extend, like Smile Munden at the play side backer here, does not extend out too far because of the jet motion. And you've got, and we've talked about this consistently, Tyke Smith on the edge. Like he's taking on the right tackle here and, you know, maintaining sort of good leverage. You're working, you're, you're sort of look at square shoulders there. And this is just good defense. Now, Munden gets a little off kilter in the back, gets does a good job of getting three you know, a couple extra yards, but still three yard gain on first down, nothing explosive, second long, boom, win. Good start. Next play. You do get the four yards. Let's go empty here. This is this is one that they obviously, from a coverage standpoint and film standpoint, they thought they were going to get this coverage based upon this look. This was very similar to what we saw against Missouri. Uh, this deep pass where, and I think this is needs to start being an automatic check for Georgia because I think they go the wide angle shows I think a little better uh, when you in different uh, different video, but you go sort of with a quarter quarter half look. So Bullard, if you watch Bullard at the bottom of the screen here, and first off, they've got quads. This is the old semi oop de oop from uh, Varsity Blues. Four receivers to one side, single isolated receiver to the other. Bullard is sort of diving back to that sort of deep quarter. And then I think it's Tyke that's in the middle of the field uh, that's in sort of a quarter role. Everett's kind of squats and plays plays the flat with the four rece- to the four receiver side. And on the back side, you have a half, you know, half, sort of half field coverage with Starks. And the, the problem here is given the fact that Lasseter has – because he's obviously playing zone covers at the top of the screen. Like, he's pushing him as far as the sidelines he can and then squatting. But there's no receiving threat whatsoever because of the formation. But much like we saw against Missouri, they're just hitting it into the window. And what's interesting here is, like, if you look at the snap, so they've got – at the very snap, C.J. Allen comes. Boom, right, right there. The tight end that's screaming up the middle of the field – he, in essence, is semi-wide open, too. Starks is kind of hanging with him and has eyes there because of the QB eyes. It's just tough to defend. I think this needs to be a true quarters check, and Lasseter needs to carry that. Uh, but, you know, because we've seen it against Missouri, we've seen it here. Outside of one other play, that would be the only, what I would say, sort of coverage uh, semi-bust uh, in a way. But, again, that's film work from the other team. That's them doing their job, trying to attack you. We'll praise Buster Faulkner a lot. We also get to praise former Georgia Bulldog Brett Seether here. This is – I've not watched every Georgia Tech play. I've watched a lot of what they do because I, I I know their offense coordinator pretty well. But I've not seen this, I, and I don't, I don't remember seeing this. I don't remember seeing this since Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma. And I saw this and because this is 
we talk about this sort of split zone bluff where you don't block the tight ends coming from one side of the field over your running zone to the right, and you don't block that guy. And he usually goes out to the flat. And it's, hey, do they, if they don't take that guy to the flat, the QB can run, all that sort of stuff. But sending him vertical here, just this was just a gorgeous football play. Perfect throw, foot in the ground, composed quarterback. Yeah. The, there were a couple plays in this game. I said every – I think I texted you, and I, there's one we're going to see later. I was like, every high school in America should be running this, and I could see this being similar to that. Yes, and they, and they run variation in this, but you, know, you have to you – also, you also got a good call. You got a man-to-man call, so you got a free safety in the middle field who has to sort of stay deep and voids that intermediate area. But this is just – again, it's, it's just great offensive play calling. That guy just beats you. And uh, with preparation and brain. Down in the red zone here, we've talked about this with Georgia, that Georgia struggles against mobile quarterbacks. What does that mean? A lot of times that manifests itself in the red zone area. We saw Jackson Dart do this. We've seen other quarterbacks do it. It's really tough to defend this inside run when you have linebackers kind of going everywhere. This is one of the best football plays, period, especially in the red zone especially when they're in a man-to-man coverage, especially when they're in a bare five-man front, you have to block two players on this play. Everybody else blocks themselves. You have to block Michael Williams, and you have to block C.J. Allen. But if you're QB, and and what's interesting about this, and we're going to get into Alabama, and Alabama doesn't necessarily do a lot of this stuff. If they do, it's going to be something that they put in this week to do just for this game, or they've been working on just for the SEC championship. You have to consistently work on these things to do them well. You can't because of the timing of the snap, the timing of the motion, the timing of the quarterback putting the ball out straight, the shuffling of the feet by the quarterback, the eyes of the quarterback. Like you have to consistently work on that. And this is an interesting, you know, they they're thinking pass, it's third and goal. Because that like that's an inside stunt from from Michael Williams instantly. And now that like that's there. And once, like Jalen Walker doesn't even have to get touched. He, the quarterback is reading him, in essence. And you're the running power because they're pulling a guard. So this is QB power read. This is Cam Newton, like back in the Auburn days. This is the Cam Newton play. This is he scored 20 touchdowns in one play. And Everett's playing man, so he's he's crossing with the Jet guy. It's just insanely hard to defend when it's done right and done well. Especially against this call in this defense. Where's where's the space created there? get to it it's, it's really pretty football and and look georgia did some things wrong in this game georgia tech also did a lot of things right and both of those can be true and you know obviously their schedule is a little different and, and the competition is a little different in, in the acc but 21 points that's the fewest points they've scored all season yeah every like you, you talk we talk about old miss tennessee is you know big time offenses georgia held them to what they held them to Georgia Tech scored more than than anybody on on Georgia, so a lot of good a lot of good sort of things that they did offensively that just hurt what you do defensively. Now we showed the yeah we showed the stretch good defense. This is so it's pause it there. Like you see them all doing the whatever the circular hand motion is right there on the on the motion right back just a little bit. Like see them all. All right, this is how we're playing a bunch. This is I, I'd love to know what exactly that that means, but it's it's something. And what's interesting is that they check into some sort of blitz here because Tyke instantly goes inside. And they're almost checking to what looks kind of like a Tampa 2 because Bullard and then Starks back at – or Everett and Starks back at safety. Look at Allen instantly in the snap, turn and run backwards. Like middle of – you know. So whatever their call is here, and then Georgia Tech just made a better call based upon their call. And like, look at Chaz. Like, you lose Chaz. He gets swallowed up because because Tyke goes inside here, and now the tight end can just, and the the H back there can just wash him. You look at like, where is Chaz? Like, yeah. it's just all those guys are blocking themselves, and now you got the tight end on Bullard. Like, that's just a successful play calling against your defense, and also you know, like you, I don't know the calls obviously, but he went inside for a reason instantly because obviously you'd want him to keep outside leverage all those sort of things but that's that's the what's interesting about this game looking at it is much like the auburn game it was a very sort of multiple it wasn't 
one player consistently, or it wasn't one thing consistently. It was, hey, this play, it's interior defensive line issue. This play, it's linebackers, eyes, and discipline issue. This play, it's edge setting. This play, it's corners. It's a little bit of everybody. Same thing, QB power read. One reason I think that they were dipping in in some of these plays is trying to avoid the quarterback run, and this is why. They're good at this, too. Mm-hmm. And, and, they, and they, they flashed the stat. Uh, and this is like formationally, this is good stuff from Georgia Tech in terms of overloading one side, getting you to, and then going sort of back against back to the short side of the field formationally. But watch right when it switches from the QB angle to the, to the actual snap. Watch uh, Warren Branson. He, he's the left defensive end, instantly works outside. And you know, now he's taken because he's there, because of. I'm assuming, like I said, defensive call. He's taking the running back. That now makes the re- these other blocks from the tackle and then the H back leading up. Now you've got instant hat on hat, right there. Those two guys, and they're get they're getting the first down because of it. And he's just running, you know, running hard and, and running well. It's just hard to defend when done. And this isn't even the greatest fake. Like that's barely a fake. It's just your your call versus their call. Sometimes they throw down the trump card and just beat you. Next up, this is a fourth down play here. Now, if you remember, they kick the field goal on a fourth and one. They come back. Why? And, Who? Either key. Why? No the, idea. The plan. <laughs> that's what he said. But then that, apparently down here in your own territory, you decide fourth and one is where you go for it, which fine. You want to do that too. Just be consistent with it. But they do convert. A little nerve wracking for them. Didn't see what he wanted here. Although maybe you sneak that in there. Comes well, around. Jo- Georgia covered this well. It's leak. Like it's the you know running back and then running back. Leaking. This is Georgia's play from past years. Running back coming out. James Cook caught this a bunch, or Darnell the dump off the tight end. But there's two sort of interesting pieces of this play. One is back it up just a little bit. So Georgia is fourth and one. Georgia's obviously in some, in some form of of man coverage, like man, man at the top, man at the bottom, single high safety. You got Tykes right there on the edge. I'm assuming having the interior tight end, the first tight end that has his hand in the ground, and then Bullard gets this as the second tight end. So as this develops, the first tight end, the one with his hand in the ground, stays in the block. And you see Tyke, and what's you can't see it, but right there, he's point he's pointing to Bullard and looking at Bullard. Like, hey, you got him, right? His, his arm even sticks out. You can't see it because of the yellow line, I think. But and then he keeps trailing with him like Bullard's he's got him and then but he keeps trailing. So now that he keeps trailing, you have no edge like. Easily, easily for King to get outside. Now, two things with this forever. One is my guess is given that it's fourth and one and he's playing tight man coverage. The receiver is about 15 yards down the field. Uh, he gets, to, I think, to about the least of 50, and he's running right with him. Yeah. Like you, you, on the all 22 angle, you can see he's running right with him, maybe even past the 50. And he gets stand, stood straight up. Like it's almost like, hey, I bet the play is done because I've been covering this long. It's fourth and one. They probably ran it almost like he took a breath because he was covering the guy step for step. And then the kid instantly just chop, chop, hits down and comes back before King, King even. Uh, comes out and just, stick with the play is what you're saying, right? Keep like assume, never assume that the play is over. Uh, and I bet that that's what's discussed with him there. Nice little inside cut here. So remember when the first play we talked about how Munden didn't widen out with the uh, jet motion with this play he does. So he's the linebacker sort of on uh, yeah, right there. So he's now instantly widening out. I think he could have been a little more patient there, but he instantly wides out with the motion and they're running zone left, split zone left, and then the guy coming back to get Chaz. But you've got, like, you've got in terms of, we talk about sort of edge setting. Look at Mike Hale here. This is edge set. Like, he's right there, out in, you know, leverage. He's got his outside arm free. Good stuff. It's the rest from the interior that you're in. And the one that, Logue is, I think it's Logue. It gets doubled. But the one that I, that's very curious here is Jordan Hall at 44, working between the two guys right there. 
this is a phenomenal job in what you're taught to do by that tackle. Just run with him. But he makes no attempt to do anything other than just lockstep with him. And the dude literally just runs right by him. Like he's, he's running parallel to the line of scrimmage versus maybe being perpendicular, finding a way to get his face, see what's going on. See, or see maybe shove him. him into the running lane or, like, it, or create some form of disruption. Yeah. And I get that on that stretch play, you want to try to maintain you know your gap and you don't want to necessarily create some bigger hole than, than that, but, he does nothing here. So now it's easy for the, and that's what makes this play so hard to defend because the running back has, especially out of pistol, the running back has the room to see. The other part here is CJ Allen. This kind of thing, you can't dip in, you can't come forward and dip, try to dip around this guy like he does. He's beat the instant he does. He's, he's patient, by the way. He's patient. He sees the action come back, but then he tries to go under it and inside of that, it, it's, your, your beat right there. Now for the play that I looked at and I was like, everybody should run this if you have a quarterback that's mobile. And just, I want you to tell me your initial reactions to it. And it, maybe I'm being hyperbolic here. Uh, one is I like the little late shift. So, you know, you got something. Guy gets it. And, you know, lots, oftentimes that's, you know, fake reverse pass, but it's still a, there's a throwing option. The receiver at the bottom of the screen streaking down is going deep. He gets covered. But what's interesting here is, is watching, you know, Chaz's eyes on it. Like, I don't know if he thinks he's got a cover because he's, he's, his eyes are right there. And, and then he turns he's around. He's like, oh, I got a cover and get in my zone because it's a pass because the quarterback kept the ball. But, you know, QB is a running threat. It's just, just it's, it's great play design. And the play before that we just watched uh, was the play right before this. So this is, you know, you get a first down, you're rolling in, in plus territory. They hit him with some, they just hit him with great calls. There's a lot just of this look game at the, that is. Look at the reactions here though. Like I'll start with, with Zion Logue here and he's 96, just like the reverses. Oh. Yes. Like they work on these guys and you see the flow happen that way. At this point, there's no one on this side of the field, maybe way back here off the screen that mm -hmm. knows what's happening. It's easy first down. Yes. And it's great call, great execution. And, you know, that's – they are and, – and we said it, talked about this on various other platforms. Tech is competent. Like, yeah. they are very competent now. And once they actually have players, if they are able to get some, they're – I think they can contend in the ACC. You and I talk all the time about how, like – really now, but future iterations of quarterback, they get, you have to be able to run. This is some fun stuff that can come from this. If you can end up with wildcat option, read and handoff to someone who's a really good passer at this yep. stage. I, I think and there's because, a whole, by the way, whole world with two QB systems. With you yes. Two running QB systems. There's a whole world of offense that just opens up. If you really want to, I'm waiting for that. Now, you know, you take some depth because if somebody goes down, you yep. know, there's half of your offense that could be gone. Love that play from, from Georgia Tech. I think it's really hard to defend. Uh, now, uh, let's get to a little outside run here. First this is the good. Second half. Yeah. This is the good. And by the way, this is, I think, the first play we're going to, one of the first plays we're going to show in the Bama thing. We're counter bash. We talked about this. We showed this with uh, Tennessee, right? We showed this in the Tennessee game where the running back made the horrible cut decision wise, but Tennessee got like eight or nine yards easy because you're going guard tackle counter the other way trying to get eyes there and then bringing the back back to the trips. But this is phenomenal from one Logue causing disruption to Michael being explosive into the backfield. And then three Raylan Wilson, his eyes don't get, he, he knows he's play side. He's still, his eyes get stay in the right place. And by the way, I think that's one thing with watching him in this game. He's a freak of nature athlete. Like the speed is unreal. He's a first round talent, speed, size, speed combo guy. It's just experience and eye discipline. And once that comes, he's going to be an absolute superstar. It seems intentional that they've been getting him more playing time, knowing that Milrose is coming down the pike. Yes. And, and here's just speed and acceleration. And there's just things with that kid that you can't teach. And CJ Allen does a good job fighting outside. Let starts with leverage here. 
Like, this is good. This is you're going to have to do this against Alabama because you're going to do these things to them. So, Tech has done this kind of option, uh, whatever the newest version of. I mean, there's still some elements of triple option within here, they spread out a lot more, mm -hmm. but uh, there, there's all these things, but then they can go empty like this. And, and this is one where they got and their back 11 is is more of a receiving threat. And this is something to me that, that's a little different with Bama. Bama's not necessarily going to sp sprint. It's wideouts average about two – or it's running backs average about two targets a game, and those are at the line of scrimmage, very short type stuff. But split out here, like this is a touchdown with a great throw. Well, and Bama – C.J. Allen does a great job but being I competent think, in coverage. I think Bama's going to look at this and say, how do we get 33 out there? Because I think Bama would love the opportunity for 33 on a deep ball in coverage yeah, oh yeah. versus Milrow. I think so. I, I, he does a good job. I'm not saying he doesn't. Yep. I'm just saying, look how far your inside linebacker is playing down the field. Really credit to him for doing it. Nicobe mm -hmm. Dean could do this too. The fact that he's – we saw Smile Munden do a little bit of this. Oh, yeah. But it's creating he's, magic. And he's done this on multiple occasions, by the way. Yeah. Where, like, he's not, he's not getting torched athletically in coverage. That's the key. Like, and by the way, that's it's a slant go. That's a tough move. Good recovery. Like I said, better ball, and it's a big play, but good job by him. This this one, this one is interesting because I think this is. And, and by the way, they ran this play, so this is the ginormous play, like fifty-seven yards or something like that. They ran this play. They dressed it up a little differently three more times in this game. Like they're like, oh, this is going to work. We're going to do it because all right. So let's pause it here. How many players are to the left of the football? Let me draw a line. The defense there. is left. So let's go. And I, the, you see where the feet are here. So, so he's on the he's on the left. He's yeah. left. So that is six. Mm -hmm. Two down linemen, backer, and then three DB. So that is now five less to the wide side of the field, which, by the way, because of the motion, is now a, the sort of strength. And you and you you've got two tight ends there, and it, you've also got your athletic edge guy, Chaz Chambliss, comparatively to to Walthauer, to the short side of the field, to the Twins. They only have to block three guys because they do the guard ta tackle pull. So Walthauer squeezes down like he sort of should. And they've now got hat on hat on just a simple sort of pop pass, but giving counter action. And once they get hat on hat, like kids fast, done. And we're going to show Alabama does this. Alabama's number 19 is better than their 13. Uh, so but telling me is football is just the numbers game. Oh, oftentimes. And and what's so watch CJ Allen here, because we I talked about his his eyes, him and Raylan Wilson, even Munden too. Their eyes, they they started tricking themselves mentally. But here he's more patient because the, he's thinking, oh, a QB run, counter coming back the other way. And once he's patient and, and sees the belt, he's toast. Right there, he's done. Like too much, too much speed. The guy's already there. Don't even have to block him. Again, great design. And they did it. They did it three more times. So it was. They found what was working and stuck with it. They just let's, dressed it up a little different. Let's give credit to a guy that we've seen do this for two years now. Never gives up on the play. Oh yeah. Four here because if he stops going full speed, this is over. Yeah, he had an angle. He I'm does what they, he's supposed to do. But and this is a part of the guy's DNA. Oh, yeah. And we're about to show uh, what it led to. Third and seven, red zone. Dane, I don't know if you know this. I think you might know this. But Brett, C Brett Seether is not Brock Bowers. Really? <laughs> really? This was the – look at the route that he runs here. It's the out and then try to go up. Yeah. And it just not – this doesn't work as well when it's not – Brock Bowers or Travis Kelsey or somebody like that. Uh, so great job, great coverage, and then great job from uh, Marcus Jones Jr. Uh, just not giving up on the play, fighting. And then this is you, – you think about sort of the interesting – the way the ball bounces kind of stuff. Tech recovered two of their own fumbles. Like, and then you know, they got other bounces of the ball that went their way. A lot of things happened. Like you get a stop here, you know, and then they went down and almost scored. So, 
And then end of the game here to make it a one possession QB run again, fake toss up the gut. It's just really hard to defend down there. It's so like, cause one, they're running a, a blitz. They're in man. So look at Lasseter going with the jet. Like he's, you only have to block two guys. Now I will say this, this, if you, if you go back or going back and rewatching this entire game, cause then like you just got to block Jalen Walker and, and uh, Mars Jones Jr. Here that if in terms of what to me translates from this game to the game against Alabama, it's edge players like Jones Jr. Chambliss, and then also wall tower. And then the, when they're in a three down line front, Ingram Dawkins, Warren Branson, Lowe, Walt Hour, those guys. They are, to me, the absolute key to the game against Alabama in terms of offense. Because I think George is not going to give up some of the broken coverage, big plays that we've seen Alabama get. And they're going to have – Milrow is going to have to really work as a passer, and he's, he's good at it. He can do it, especially down the field. But if you let them do what they want to running game, and their offensive line is bigger and more physical than Tech's, but Tech got movement – and the way they created some angles with certain things, they got a lot of movement in that space. And that's just going to be, that's going to be to me, the key of the game. If you're watching live, we're going to continue that discussion and another video here in about now uh, where we're previewing Alabama, scouting what they do, looking back at some of their games, including uh, one iron ball to remember. Uh, but, before we get there, I want to make sure that you support our friends over at Breda Pest Management, the official pest control at the Georgia Bulldogs. BredaPest.com is where you can make sure that your home is protected by the same folks that protect Sanford Stadium and Stegman Coliseum. BredaPest.com, the official pest control of UGA. Also, make sure you support ASW Distillery, that Fiddler Bourbon. Every, uh, every purchase of uh, that is good for you. Every purchase of the uh, Hunker Vodka, is good for Classic City Collective. George's NIL arm, for certain proceeds go to that. So uh, make sure you support ASW to still buy dogs. Five of the six founders are UGA grads. One thing, and a big thank you to all of those of you who actually watch us talk about Georgia football because the end of the regular season is here. And looking back, based upon YouTube and the various platforms that we these things exist, about 30,000 views per episode. Woo! So, Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate it. Hit the like it's, button, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. It's obviously my football acumen that is bringing everyone here. I think so. No, it's it's <laughs> me stumbling through this and uh, being around smart people. That's what we do here. Hey, we're going to get off this so we can start our other live here, probably in about uh, a minute and a half or so. Uh, thanks for watching Film Don't Lie here from UGA Sports.